Hi, and welcome to Fathom's new expert series. It's great to have you with us. Today, we're joined by Jenny Whitehouse. She's talking to us about how to have the most impact possible in the way that you help your clients' business performance. Jenny Whitehouse is the founder and trainer at The Impactful Advisor. She's also a consulting CPA with Broder, Markle, Davis & Co and the president of the Information Technology Alliance in the US. Jeannie is also a self-proclaimed nerd, a doting grandma, loves basset hounds, and is a great person to have a practical and insightful conversation with. Dive in to learn more as we talk with Jeannie about tools, processes, and mindset. Today, we've got Jeannie talking to us about how she's using Fathom, what problems and challenges she's solving, and her best tips and advice. Recently, Jeannie was nominated as one of the top 100 most influential accountants, which is a huge privilege, and it's wonderful to greet her today and have her talk with us. So Jeannie, welcome to the Expert Series. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honour and a pleasure to be here. So Jeannie, you also wear the hat of the next incoming president of the Information Technology Alliance, but today you're speaking as an accountant who is the founder of the Impactful Advisor. Can you tell us what is the thing that you're most excited about with you and your team at the Impactful Advisor? Making an impact for clients. I'm motivated to try to help clients move the needle forward in the direction of their dreams. And that's what I think accountants should have been doing all along. We're just now starting to embrace that as as a service delivery. And I'm excited that the profession has finally caught up to me because I've been talking about it for a very long time. And also that we have tools like Fathom that enable us to have that kind of impact for our clients. (laughs) So Jeannie, you've been in the accounting industry for quite a while now, and you've also worked with us at Fathom. I know that you know Rowan really well from many years of working together. Can you tell us briefly what's brought brought you to where you are now? So I started with Deloitte in tax, and I spent four and a half years there, went on a journey through different accounting roles, ended up in a small firm, CPA firm in Atlanta, And after 15 years, and the day I made partner, I left. I decided that I, I, I finally stopped to think about what I was doing and realized that I didn't enjoy it and that I was tired of not making an impact for my clients. I really suffered for my clients when they owed tax or when they had a challenge because I didn't know what to do to help them. So I went in search of ways to get better, to make the profession better, and to also give voice to the accountants who did a great job and did great work and were underappreciated. So that's led me through a bunch of journeys. I went into high tech and that's when I did my first presentation and realized that was kind of the thing I came here to do, help communicate across barriers to understanding. And so I got training it so that I could be better at that or try to be better at that. And then I went and worked in these tech companies and then eventually ended up in Napa Valley working with wineries where I apply advisory skills that I picked up along the way for those clients. So it's been a circuitous route to get here. (laughs) And I love, Ginny, you're at that nexus between making an impact, how to push the levers for excellent business performance, but also um, where technology fits into all of that. So it's tech, it's people, it's conversations, it's business performance. You're existing in that nexus, aren't you? It is. And that's really where everything is today, right? It's not even separate anymore. It's all melded together. So the people and the technology and AI is showing that even more, that the AI by itself doesn't do as much as we thought. It requires some people interpretation and adaptation around it in order to bring out the best of it. So, yeah, that's where businesses are. They're trying to integrate all of those things together to get to the result that they're trying to, to achieve. So, Jeannie, two weeks ago now we were at an industry event and just chatting and catching up. And I thought it was really interesting. We were talking about this kind of phenomenon of as accountants, folks want to know that they have all the answers and that they have all the answers correct and ready to go before they even open up a conversation with the client. And there's really kind of this necessary mind shift to how can I be the guide for my clients and explore those what if questions with them. So I think there's a big change on the horizon around, yeah, I'm not going to know the answers, but I'm here to guide you and support you. And that's kind of this evolving shift and pattern that we're seeing. So I'm curious from your perspective, what you see as the most common challenges or obstacles that accountants and advisors are facing right now? 
I think it's exactly what you said there, Rowan. It's this, this burden that we carry of always being the expert. We fly in with the answers and tell our clients, fly, literally, my Superman, Basset Hound in a cave, comes in as Superwoman or Superman with the answers for the client. And if we don't have the ability to do that, we avoid the topic entirely. And so one of the big parts of the training that I do is to give us permission to not be that expert, but instead recognize the client as the expert in their own business. And our job is to ask them different questions and to help that client find data to give validity to the things that they already know. Because a business owner knows that business way better than I can ever know it coming in, especially in the wine industry. I'm from the South and flying into a winery and acting like I know more than they do is not going to be believable or accepted by that person. So I have to embrace my own ignorance, my curiosity, and then not be afraid to ask questions so that that owner can enlighten me. And then I can see it from a different perspective and then help that owner achieve the results they're trying to achieve. And that's when it's fun. That's when accounting becomes fun. The drudgery goes away. The impact elevates. The clients, when they say things like, wait, you're an accountant, right? That's when we go, yes. They don't think I'm an accountant. They're not going to actually <laughs> ask me a tax question the next time I see them. And they really appreciate the insights that we share. And we have the data. We have all these magical pieces of information that we haven't figured out how to translate so that the client can do anything with it. And that's what the journey to be a partner in our client's success is all about. And that's why it's great to have tools like this that let us convert or translate the language of accounting into visual images that CEOs and business people can actually appreciate and understand. Before we dive into the fun of the advisory side, can you just unpack, you're spending a lot of time in the accounting space, you're at lots of events. Can you just unpack what are the common challenges you're seeing um, around the drudgery of trying to begin a conversation or trying to pull the data together? I think the profession is in a position of overwhelm right now with too much work, too much low value work, and they can't stop doing that to take advantage of the higher value work. So they're really worn out and frustrated because somebody has to find the taxes. There aren't enough people coming into the profession and the people who come in and get stuck doing the drudgery are exiting in larger numbers than we've seen in the past. So we have this sort of challenge in the profession with more work than we can do and also underappreciated for the value that we deliver, which has been the problem all along. But we've allowed our clients to... um, to let us get away with low value service delivery and and to make the shift requires us to stop doing something. And we never want to turn a client away. We're afraid to let go of the work, even if it's low value, low reward and high effort. And so it's a box we put ourselves in, but we're also afraid to go into new areas when we cannot come in as we have already talked about as the experts. So going down a new path, And also going into a path where we're projecting the future is frightening to us because we're used to reconciling this to that. And there's no reconciling to the future. Nobody that I know accounted for COVID in any of their budgets. And I mean, there are things like that that we can't account for. So that is uncomfortable for us. We're We're a profession of people that like accuracy and, you know, linear thinking and all of those things. And to try to go into a new area is very uncomfortable for many of us. And so we need tools to help us get there. And I'm curious, Jeannie, I know you have a pretty streamlined process of how you engage with clients and work with them and how that flows. Before you found that process, and I'm sure it was a journey to get there, what was the biggest roadblock that you felt before unlocking that? if you send out a mailer to a client that says, we're CPAs, we want to help you do advisory stuff, or we want to help you improve your business results, they're going to go, no, I already have somebody doing my taxes. So we had to first in our market, and the firm had already been delivering advisory services to select clients, but the wider marketplace didn't know about it. So we had to come in and reset the expectation for the profession, for our clients, that we were not tax people or audit people, but we, were wanted, we wanted to become partners in their business success. So changing their mindset was very difficult. And so we had to start showing them things in order to move that positioning that we had as accountants. So we would bring in tools and visuals and other examples. And we do things like training on communication styles and all kinds of things that nobody would think an accountant could do. 
And so by showing the, that in classes, we were able to establish ourselves as, as a non-traditional accountant, but it took a while. That's fantastic, Jenny, because that leads into our next question for you is from the client's perspective then, what do you see are the biggest problems or challenges from their point of view? They don't know that accountants deliver it and we don't tell them as a profession. We have, again, we've, we've let them get away with minimal levels of service delivery. We've taught them to expect that we're not going to do anything other than this, this, and this. And so the clients don't even know to ask us for help. They go find somebody who's not an accountant or who's in a, an external consulting capacity to help them. Meanwhile, we've got all the insight. Hmm. So it's a, it's a big challenge for them for us to transition from the box we have been in to a much bigger, funner box that can help that client in a much bigger way. But we haven't established credibility in that space most of the time. So all of a sudden we come in one day after we've been trained to go, okay, now I'm an advisor. And they're like, what is that? And why haven't you done this for the last 15 years that you've been working with me? And we're afraid to do that because of that same thing. We think the client's going to go, well, why didn't you do this before? But if we do it right, and if we ask new questions and we say things like, I just discovered this new approach, I'd like to try it with you. Let me show you a few things and see if this might be useful. And the client goes, oh my gosh, yes, then we're in. And, and that's all it takes is that first initial step of asking a different question than the traditional, what part of your financial statements is broken and how can I fix it to what is it you're trying to do? Where do you go to see if your business is on track? How can I support you in getting better decision making um, within your organization to get you more timely insights so that you can be confident when you make a decision? Those are the things owners of businesses are trying to do. And we have underserved them in that regard. Yeah, that makes so much sense. And as someone that's been working with the business and their numbers, you have that pulse on what's going on under the surface. So a shift for everyone, but it also so much value and that you're you're embedded as that person already. So yeah, just exploring that with the client and shifting together, getting comfortable with the uncomfortable, I guess. Part of what we have to train is there are three aspects of what we have to teach accountants to move into this partnership role with our client. It's a mindset shift, a tool set shift, you need different tools and a skill set shift. And it's applying the skills that you already have, but in different ways. The hardest one to change is the mindset. It's getting mm -hmm. accountants to think differently, to not come in and tell how much they know, but instead ask, so the client can tell you is what they know, and you can identify from that where they might need additional assistance. And it's a big shift. Right, for sure. Well, our next question for you is, if you could kind of step us through your methodology with a client, um, what does your process look like? And I'm thinking kind of specifically from maybe that first meeting with them where you're getting to understand the business and you mentioned typically the first question they ask is, where is my cash? That's a common one um, that I'm sure everyone watching this will be able to relate to. Yeah, what does it look like from there? So the number one question we get as accountants, at least from my experience, is if I made a profit, where's my cash? And they have no concept that profit and cash are not the same thing. But we don't start with that in our, in our onboarding process. We start with questions about, just like I said, why are you a winery in our case? Because all of our clients are wineries. And then we ask them what works across five areas of your business, what's not working across five areas of your business, and what is your ideal outcome in each of those five areas? And those areas are finance, customers, and finance is a dollar sign. So we, we call this a scope grid. So the S is the dollar sign for financial, and then C for customer, O for operations, P for people, and end in mind. So we want them to identify What's broken in finance? What's broken in customers? What's broken in operations with people and the end in mind? Are you on track towards that end goal that you have in your mind? That's the premise for starting any sort of relationship with a client, knowing really what the heck they're trying to do, why they became a winery and put up with all the pain and suffering that it takes to be a winery. You have fires, you've got earthquakes in Napa, you've got all kinds of compliance from government, you've got staffing shortages, you've got all this stuff. And you didn't just do it to make a profit. There's a heart-based or emotional reason that drop, drew you into the winery. So we start finding that out. And then we start talking to them about what they want to achieve on the financial side. 
And nine times out of 10, especially in our industry, the goal is to increase cash flow. They want positive cash. That's their biggest struggle because we have huge fluctuations in cost and in income streams. And so they want to know, you know, why don't I have enough cash? What's going on? And that gives us a huge opportunity to show them or to educate them on the difference between profitability and cash. And that's where we use Fathom to, to illustrate that in a very visual way. And the, the beauty of using Fathom is I can use Fathom sample data and Fathom has, I love it, uh, Vanderlei Industries for the sample data, which is um, from Seinfeld. It's George <laughs> Costanza's company, fake company that he never worked at. But I have a, fa I have a fake company I set up that is a, a winery. It's called Le Coup Rouge Winery. And we use that to, as a demo example that we can illustrate for our clients. When they come in for that meeting, we could say, this is the kind of thing we want to do with your information as a client. We show them this thing. And is it okay for me to show it right now? Yeah, that was my next question is if you could show us and kind of step us through what that process looks like and how you leverage that tool. This is, and I'm, I've gone into Fathom and I'm already in this goal seek screen and Fathom has a whole bunch of really cool stuff. But this one screen, if you will get Fathom and just even show the, the sample company to that client, after you've had that conversation about what they're trying to do, find out what their financial objective is and say, this is the kind of thing we want to do with you and your data and your teams to educate everybody about the, the role they can play in moving forward towards whatever financial goal you have. So this goal seek screen, and I'll, and I'll flip through the other screens in a second, but this is where you start that dialogue. And this is where you pull yourself out of competition with any other accountant. The fact that you can have a conversation like this, an interactive dialogue with a client around their numbers is mind blowing for many CEOs. They always want to buy it themselves, even though they may or may not ever look at it again. They're like, I want to play with these levers. So you go in and select your financial goal and I'm pulling from, again, fake, lousy data from my, Le Coup Rouge is redneck in French. So that's a redneck winery that I created. Um, and so I picked the year and a term and I went back to 2019, which was kind of the last normal in quotes year. And then it brings, it's overlaying my QuickBooks data so that I'm not writing anything to QuickBooks, but I can read it in a much more visual and interesting way than I can then share with that client. So I have that goal set. I'm at negative $764,000, which is, uh, you know, what to be expected for my Southern family that's running this winery. And we want to get to positive $120,000. What this shows me is the levers I can push, the things I can control to influence my ability to generate more cash. And when you talk to any business owner who has any sort of financial challenge, their number one go-to strategy is to sell more stuff, whatever the stuff is. In our case, it would be sell more units of wine. So normally a volume strategy is your go-to solution to any financial goal. What this tool could say is, and I can ask my client, what do you think we should do if, I'm, if I've got negative cash flow? And they're going to go, well, sell more wine. Okay, here's what happens if I sell more wine. It goes from negative 764 to negative 1 million. And they're going... That doesn't make any sense. What this model assumes is if I don't fix all of these other factors and keep selling with the relationship between sales and inventory growth and the relationship between sales and receivables growth, I'm going to grow myself right out of business. What I instead need to do is look at some of these other factors first, and then I can improve what's happening and improve the cash flow. So I walk through that. No client has ever understood it when I told them that without having a visual like this to show. So when they give me their ideal solution and I go, okay, we'll do what you said. Boom. Well, your cash went down by another 400,000. That's ha that has impact. So I can reduce cost of what I'm selling. So I need to improve the margins. And you see my cash flow starts going in the positive. The owners go, oh my gosh. And then I go, I can raise price here so we can do it. And we can talk about how you can achieve that with your team. But first, let's get you clarity around what's possible around this tool. And then I can maybe focus on firing some people. We accountants think that's fun. And so then I can look at these balance sheet items that most owners never consider when they're looking at cash flow. How much collection do I need to make to get the money from the sales I've already incurred or, or completed? So if I can collect faster, look what happens to cash. So if I kept selling and had the same ratio of uncollectible accounts, I would sell out of business. So what I have to do is improve the relationship 
between these balance sheet items and what's happening in the P&L to have this kind of an impact on cash flow. That's the understanding that they rarely have. And many accountants, though, I didn't realize this until I had a tool like this that let me do this. And I kept going, why is, oh, what it's assuming here is that I don't fix these systemic problems elsewhere that are impacting the cash flow. So then I can slow pay some of my vendors and I can reduce the inventory growth in relation to what I'm selling. And then you see my cash flow starts to move to positive. So I can make any sort of changes to this that I want to with that owner sitting there. This is not their data at this point, but this dialogue pulls me up on a pedestal right in front of them. They're going, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Nobody's ever explained this to me. And then I say, well, this is great now that you understand it. Imagine if I could talk to your teams and show them this same thing and then assign owners to each one of these steps so that they commit to making these improvements. The impact on your business, the impact on morale, all of that would be huge. And this is from one screen in this software. This is just a tiny piece of the capabilities inside Fathom. But this alone, if you'll start with this, it will change your life as an accountant. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's invaluable. So powerful, the impact that it can have and just changing the mindset and understanding of what's going on under the hood here and what can change and, the results. And compare that to handing somebody a tax return. I mean, right. when they came in for the initial meeting, we go, well, we, we don't, there's nothing to show them. I can show them the tax form. Look at this pretty form. I'm going to put all the numbers in the right boxes. And then you're going to take it and owe a bunch of money or not. And then come back a year later, I'll tell you the same thing. I mean, when I do this, they go, this is incredible. I really want you to do this for me. And what else can you do? And then the doors open to figure out how to improve these things with them and their teams. Amazing. So Jeannie, I've got a question about your process. If you were meeting with a client whose data you didn't have, would you still be able to use GoalSeek to have that conversation and understand their business? The demo data that gets them. That's what I'm saying. I can use the Vanderlei sample company that Fathom provides. I can use the sample fake winery that I'm doing here. But the concept of this and my saying, and what I would like to do is do this with your data and then show you exactly where we need to focus in your, in your winery. So yeah, the sample view, and the, you don't want to give this away as a service, right? So uh, on your initial onboarding or, or prospecting meeting, you want to show them the kind of thing that you can do and then create a billable service when they sign up with you at a very high rate now because you've wowed them so, and then you make this part of your service delivery and you can do this quarterly or monthly or annually or whatever you want with the client. But every time you do this, they're going to feel like they understand the numbers that you pro provide for the first time, probably ever. And the, the cool thing for us as accountants is I don't have to look at it in this pretty colorful way. This is scary to us accountants. This is like frou frouy <laughs> marketing -y, numbery stuff. I could go print my spreadsheets. I can export stuff to spreadsheets. I could get all kinds of cool reports out of here. I can get a list of, of KPIs that I generate. So what it allows us to do, though, is bridge my way of thinking about the information with the client's way. And when we can achieve that, that's when everybody wins. And that's when they see the value in this information that we deliver. So this is a KPI screen. I can do all kinds of cool things here. I can cre create custom ones. This revenue per case is a custom measure that we created. We bring in non-financial data to give clients really valuable, actionable insights into where the problems really are. And I can do all kinds of things here in different ways, but I can still get the data out in a way that I know that it matches what I have in my QuickBooks system or in my financial statements that I'm also producing. I can also present um, investor reporting in here. I can add comments and do all kinds of things. But if I will just do the goal seek screen and nothing else, and just with sample data, you will get those clients to come on board at a, at a very different way and, and in appreciation of the value that we're able to provide. A really common thing we hear, <clears throat> Jeannie, at the moment is the penny really drops when clients understand the difference between cash and profit. You alluded to this oh. earlier. You just see them light up and because it's something, I mean, if you're running a business, you can't admit that you don't know what that difference is. Even if you're in an executive level position, I was inside of multiple software companies and we would, I was the director and then VP and the financial statements would get passed out and we were given objectives to improve some financial result. And everybody would go, and the CFO would go, do you get, are you everybody okay? And we go, 
Mm-hmm. And then everybody go out in the hall and go, what was that? What am I supposed to do? This, what is this? What's an asset? What's a, you know, you get to a certain level in your career and you're supposed to have this immediate accounting knowledge. And when somebody translates it like this, it empowers you to be able to finally make sense of it in a way that you can apply it now. So it's a huge educational tool. Plus a, there's a forecast capability in here that, that creates a forecast very easily and quickly from the data that's already in QBO. And then you can modify it and do all kinds of cool stuff with it. So you can really do a whole bunch for that client in terms of getting context around the numbers and giving them context. Speaking of education, I think there'll be a lot of team leaders or managers who would love to know from you, Eugenie, how did you get your team on board with this approach? Like, obviously, you've been an early adopter. How do you get your team comfortable with using this live, particularly in front of a client and having that conversation? I was selling software, software back in the DOS days that had an interactive what if capability that since died and then Fathom came along and had this cool screen. And I was so thrilled that I could find a solution, but I had the same problem with my team that I had when I was selling this to the accountants, I would show them this interactive capability and they would ask me, where's the report. I don't want to have an interactive dialogue with clients. And I'm like, no, you need to have the conversation. And they said, I'm not going to show them something if I don't know what to do about it. So, for example, if I if I move the lever that says increase sales or volume and they say, OK, how do I do that? I don't know what to say. So I'm not going to open this can of worms up and expose myself to stuff that I don't understand. I don't know anything about how they should cut their expenses or what they can do to reduce cost of goods sold or how to improve receivables days or any of those things that are on that dashboard, that goal seek screen. So I created a guide for accountants who were going to show this goal seek screen so they would have comfort in opening up the dialogue. So if the example, if you're saying increase the price, these are some things you might do. And these are some things that we actually see in the wine industry to increase the average price. You can look at channel mix. You can look at product mix. You can get your teams educated about more of the expensive wine and less of the cheaper wine that will drive your average price up. So that's how you move the needle forward on price. You don't have to raise the sticker price to do that. But what you find is the teams know what to do. So the goal is to say, our, our plan is to increase price. That's how we're going to fix our cash flow problem. Bring the team in and say, what ideas do you come up with? And that's when the ideas flow for the team versus you need to sell a million dollars more in revenue, which is what we normally do to teams. They go back out of the meeting and go, I don't know, I'm going to do what I did yesterday. But with this, we walk through alternative ways to achieve it, and then they can make those differences, those changes happen. But this is for the accountants to give them confidence to open up that goal seek screen and have a dialogue with clients. So these are things, actions that can be taken in the client, and these are service opportunities for an accountant. So I created this spreadsheet. We're going to make a link available for people to request this and download it. And this is through my business, The Impactful Advisor which is a company that provides online training, the same training that I took a long time ago and I just got the rights to during COVID. So I acquired the rights to the online training. I took it live back in the day when that's how we did things. And then it went online in 2018 and I got the rights to resell it and coach people through it during COVID. And so this is part of what we teach in that training. So if, if if the goal is to increase price, then these are actions that you could take to make that happen. And then these are service opportunities for you to come in and work with that client to achieve a different outcome. And so that's what I've done for each of those sliders that you saw displayed on that goal seek screen. And again, this is intended for the accountants to, to have some idea about where to go with each of those individual strategies that might come out of a meeting with the client. So Jeannie, you've <laughs> talked a bit about your the mindset shifts different tools you can use and your process and flow with clients. What would you say has been the most important kind of piece of the puzzle in increasing impact with clients? Oh boy, that's a toughie because there are a lot of pieces. First, it's all three. It's the mindset shift that I made. You mean I don't have to know everything? You got to be kidding me. That's a huge relief. I've had people tell me that when they go through the training. Mm -hmm. You ask them at the end, what's the biggest thing you will take away that I don't have to be the expert. 
and I can still add tremendous value by just documenting what the client says or listening to what the client says or reviewing things from a different angle and then letting them come up with a solution. So the, the mindset of not having to be the expert all the time, when you're a tax expert, you are. I mean, you've studied all that ridiculous tax code and you've really gotten deep into something and you are expert and you're expected to have the answers for clients. When you're doing advisory, you can't be the expert on everything. And, and so what you bring though is a, is a way of looking at the world that adds value. So asking different questions, inquiry is one of the skills that we have. So taking that skill set that I have and leveraging it differently, and then looking for tools like Fathom and other tools that will help me bridge the communication gap that I always have with clients on these things. And also helping them apply automation to make the processes run more smoothly within their business, because oftentimes it's the processes that they have in place that create the financial problem that we see on the financial statements. And we seldom go deep enough to uncover that if we're doing traditional service delivery. So Jenny, you're talking about quite a holistic approach to advisory there. Can you also describe to us what's in your tech stack that's helping you deliver these services to clients? When it comes to tools that we use with clients, Mm -hmm. Fathom is, is what we use for this financial insight that we need to provide to that client and also education. I mean, I did a training class for um, a class on financial fluency, understanding finances for a a group of tasting room professionals. These are frontline people who are going to be pouring the wine. And this is a winery that hasn't opened yet. And they wanted me to come in and get the baseline understanding happening across the team. I went in and I had a series of terms and technology and and concepts that I shared. And then at the end of it, I said, and this is the kind of thing you need to understand about cash flow. And I put the goal seek screen up there. I use it in every training that I do. It's just so informative for people who are trying to wrestle with these foreign concepts. So I use it in that way. But I mean, our firm, internal to our firm, we have you know traditional accounting tools. We have all that stuff. But my clients have primarily QuickBooks Online. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they use other tools. And we still have some desktop clients. And the beautiful thing about Fathom is it'll connect directly to both as plus zero. Plus, I can import financials from other products. So we have clients using Microsoft Dynamics Nav, and I can export to Excel and bring their financial data in. We have other people on NetSuite. There are other clients in different environments, so we can still get their data in and show them this same sort of insight. So that's one of the beautiful things as well. I can get the data in there easily and convert it into this visual representation. All right, I've got another toughy question for you, or maybe just hard to narrow down because there's a lot here. But I'm curious on your journey to figuring out that you wanted to move more into those deep, impactful relationships and refining your process for that. What has been, if you could pick one, the biggest learning along the way? how appreciative clients are when you take the time to make concepts simple enough for them to understand it. And it's not talking down to them. It's just breaking things down to the lowest level so that the people at each level in that organization can see how their job impacts the overall financial goal. So we take a increase a million dollars in revenue, for example, and break it down to what you do if you're in the tasting room to get somebody to buy one more bottle of wine so that you can then move towards that extra million dollars in revenue, that kind of thing. And how excited people get when they understand their connection to the financial goal. That's the biggest shock for me, how much they appreciate that insight and the payback. I mean, the reward you get from somebody going, oh, I get it. It's huge. I mean, it's just, it's life-changing for me to feel like I'm doing something that makes a difference. And I had a meeting yesterday where I was working with a a winery owner, uh, the next generation who was moving into a winery that was a family winery and needed to understand financial statements. Nobody had ever taught her anything about financial statements. So having her say, this all makes sense now, um, you can't imagine the difference this makes for me when I go back now because I understand these concepts. And that's, you know, that's what I live for, those moments. I love how Accounting Today described you in their top 100 most influential accountants. I'll just read it. It says here, White House shows accountants how to be the most impactful advisors they can be at a time when their clients 
desperately need this kind of holistic guidance. So my question is, can you share with us a story where you've seen this impact on a client that's really impacted on you? I mean, we've enlightened people. We've had, our firm has had huge impact on clients that sold their business and we've been able to guide them through the process. I mean, one of the fun things for me is watching my, my peers provide traditional service plus advisory that does make an impact, reduces taxes dramatically. Because we have built this relationship now, instead of being the once a year tax people, because we're doing these other things like coaching on the, on the communication and educating their teams on financial concepts and these other things, we're connected more frequently. And so we have insights into things that might impact the taxes in a way that we didn't before. So because we've added these services holistic all the way across the firm, everybody in our firm has been through the level five training. I'm training six new people right now in the program so that everybody who does anything in the firm has an awareness of what's possible, whether they deliver the service or not. Um, there are questions they can ask in the course of doing audits or tax returns that can open up doorways to helping the client in a better way. It, it's the smaller impacts that build up into the bigger impact that we're trying to achieve. And, and our why for the firm is to try to elevate the wine industry. That's what our mission is. And so we do free training classes all the time. Um, we do things like I, yesterday, we had a crisis change in benefits provided for disaster recovery. And we, we were able to produce something that we could release the same day we got information on that. So we are, we pride ourselves in trying to think about what our clients need and trying to deliver that as quickly and as, uh, as easily as possible. Yeah, and I love the theme coming through of efficiency and effectiveness and niching is a really effective strategy, isn't it? Understanding it's, an industry back to front. Yeah, yeah I, when I was in, a, in firms in prior lives, in small firms at Deloitte and then in corporate accounting and then in smaller firms, a smaller firm in Atlanta, we took all kinds of clients. And so when a law change came out, you had to figure out all these different applications across, you know, a hundred different kinds of clients in some cases. And so I didn't realize how big an improvement it would be to be able to focus on one unique industry. But we have alignment with the vendors that serve our clients, with the associations they belong to, with the providers of services to those clients. We know the bankers. Um, we know all of those things because we're focused on this. And also the geography focus that we have, which is highly unusual we have both a geographical focus and a, an industry focus. And so it makes it way easier for us to figure out how to handle some of these things. We can figure out what applies to wineries. That's why we were able to quickly produce some um, information on these relief efforts that came out because we had one kind of client to focus on. And there are different permutations of those clients, but it's still way simpler than figuring out a trucking company and a Waffle House client, which we had in Atlanta, a bunch of those. Um, and a mobile park, mobile home park, and a you know, and a cold storage warehouse. I mean, all these different kinds of clients. And when a tax provision comes out, it's very difficult to figure out how to get them information they can use quickly enough. So it helps, but also the connections we can make with the vendors. We have you know some influence with these tech providers who provide inventory solutions and things. When they when they need help on that, I can reach out to the vendors and say, I got 150 clients in this industry. Can you help me? They go, yes. So it, it gives you some more power to help your clients in other ways. Yeah, I love that. And we're hearing that a lot, especially the smaller firms where they focus on an industry, they can go deeper. And it also helps with the KPIs that they can put into you Fathom. Do benchmarking. We do a scorecard that we create that shows different kinds of non-financial metrics. Um, so we create stuff like that. Um, and it, it's, a, it's a benefit of having focus. Jeannie, a couple of tough questions to close out on. Okay. Here's the first one. Okay. What is one of the most influential mindset shifts an accountant or advisor can make? What is one of the most influential mindset shifts? Um, it's Well, I, I, on top of the things that I've already said over and over again about not having to be the expert, it's also thinking about measurements in a different way. So we're used to measuring at the end of a process. Financial statements are at the end of a process. We need to start looking at the things that went into that process and start counting sooner in the process. That shift of thinking from all financial statement data and metrics to activity-based measures and input metrics 
that's where we can have the biggest impact on what shows up on that financial statement at the end. So looking differently at when we measure, what we measure, and how we create those measures is, a, is the biggest shift I think we can make. Mm, I love that. So it's like the numbers aren't static. It's a way of thinking the numbers are dynamic and what impact we can have on the numbers. It's the, that we have a graphic that we talk about. There's a different way of looking at profit. It's inputs applied to activities that are people in process doing things that generate the outputs that we measure on the financial statement. And we want to start measuring at the input stage. How many inputs, how many phone calls does it take to generate the revenue that comes out the other side? How many email addresses do you have to capture to get the, the uh, sales that come off the website? How many this, that, and those are things we are not used to even looking at, much less capturing and counting. But that's where we move the needle, not on the financial statements after the fact. We've got to start looking at those things that are happening that screw up the financial outcomes that show up on the financial statement. That's fantastic. I love hearing that. Okay. And this is the last question for you, Jeannie. Yeah. What's something that accountants don't talk about enough that we should be talking about? Statement of cash flows. QuickBooks Online and many of the traditional accounting software packages do not make the cash flow statement, the statement of cash flows, a standard financial statement that you print. If you go to the QuickBooks standard menu, you have to search for the statement of cash flows. So I think this is, I've been on a mission for this for a long time. If you do nothing else, make sure you review the cash flow statement with your clients so they can see where the money went. And, and it's on there on the financial. You can look down it and see what the operational earnings were, what the operational cash flow was. You can see the financing cash flow and the investing cash flow. And you can see where it went and where it came in. And that's half the mystery for the clients. Even better is to do the goal sync where you can see the things that you can do to improve it. But a, a view of the cash flow statement should be a standard part of every financial conversation we have with clients. And it is not even printed most of the time. And Fathom has a visual representation of that, that cash flow statement that is an even more effective way to communicate how much of what you sold got consumed in bad cash management practices. So um, making the cash flow statement a standard part of every financial package is um, is a shift that I think we should all be making. That's fantastic. Well, Jeannie, it's been amazing. We've talked through so much content and we've hit you with some hard questions. I, I'm Thank sure um, I'm sure our viewers would be really appreciative of your really practical advice, but also the strategies and approaches. I love how you've talked about tools, processes and mindset shifts. So I love that it's people doing accounting it's people helping people people helping businesses and as we say here at fathom behind every business are the courageous business owners and their teams you know and advisors who are helping their business succeed so it's a real team effort before we go you are the incoming president of the information technology alliance uh in the u.s there is there um anything you'd like to share with us about your next season in that role the role brings together people from all different aspects of technology. It brings together resellers of accounting software who do products that have a reseller channel. It brings together the client accounting service teams inside large accounting firms, the CIOs, the chief information officers inside large accounting firms. It brings together consultants to the profession, vendors who provide software to the profession, as well as partners like Fathom, companies that provide solutions that enable the, the members of these IT organizations to deliver service to clients. So it brings together all of these things, each of which I've had a hand in in the course of my career. And it's all about empowering those people to do better. So it's a collaborative association that I have the honor of um, having recently joined. So it, it's a great opportunity and an exciting one. We're also thrilled for you. And it's great to have someone who can navigate the plethora of tools and solutions and thinking out there. It's, um, it's a tricky landscape. So the role is quite a challenge. So a lot of similarities, a lot of ways for me to tie everything together in my career. So it's exciting and great people to work with an amazing group of people. Yeah. I'm feeling inspired just hearing all about it. This new role is couldn't be more perfect for you. Super excited. Congratulations once again. And thank you. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here.
We'll make available Jeannie's checklist that she was talking through. It'll be on her website, The Impactful Advisor. So I'll put those links at the end of the video. <laughs> Thanks again, Jeannie, for your time. It's been a joy speaking with you. Thanks for sharing your insights so freely. And um, we wish you all the best with your newest role. You've got so many hats on. It's unbelievable. Well, thank you for creating great products. Keep up the good work. You make it easy to do advisory. So I'm very appreciative. Well, that's the best feedback we could ever get. Thanks again, Jenny, And thank you, Rowan. Thank you.